हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम वेलकम बैक टू योर फेवरेट एंड इंडिया मोस्ट एफोर्डेबल लर्निंग प्लेटफॉर्म फिजिक्स वाला सो इन द लास्ट सेशन ऑफ लॉस ऑफ मोशन सो वी डिस्कस द कॉन्सेप्ट रिलेटेड टू द फ्रिक्शन राइट सो दी स्टार्टेड द फर्स्ट टॉपिक ऑफ द फ्रिक्शन एंड वी अंडरस्टूड वॉट इज फ्रिक्शन एंड वॉट आर द डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ फ्रिक्शन एंड इन द टाइप्स ऑफ फ्रिक्शन वी हैव सीन the static friction and kinetic friction and when do we apply the static friction and when do we apply the stat uh, static friction and uh, what is the formula for f limiting what is the formula for kinetic friction what is mu s mu k all these things we studied in the last session so that's considered as a that just consider it as a introduction to friction and basics of friction so to today so between the two blocks how do we find the frictional force okay and how do we find the acceleration of each block so that we are going to cover in today's session so that is lecture number 8 of loss of motion myself krishna your physics faculty so let's start the today's session guys see here so today's targets are block over block questions and then what is angle of friction very small topic and the kinetic friction how it will be applied over the block over block problems and static friction how it will be applied so here most of the students they feel difficult in these questions black or black questions so we are going to follow some standard procedure for all the questions which are related to the block over block problems and so you i assure you you can solve any question if you solve uh, by this procedure that's for sure just follow the procedure so understand the concept and solve as many numericals as possible so whether it's je or bitsat or cuet or neat so or any other competitive exam any question related to the block over block problem you can easily solve i can assure you that okay but given the condition follow the procedure properly right chal so as usual for the next one hour just be with me avoid all the disturbances around you guys and at the end of the lecture it's very important to prepare your own short notes chalo so with a very high positive energy let's start the today's lecture so that is what block over block problem solving so block over block problems means see here there are two blocks which are placed one on each other so here the coefficient of friction between the the bottom surface the bottom block and the surface let it be mu1 and between these two block the coefficient of friction is uh, mu2 so and if the force is applied on f so then they may ask in the question so find acceleration of m1 and m2 so like how what kind of questions can be asked so that's what i am saying in this slide okay and how to solve such questions we will see it in the further slides so find acceleration of find acceleration of m1 and m2 blocks m1 and m2 blocks are so they may ask you to find the normal reaction so that's pretty easy so finding the normal reaction right so the block over block problems can be given like this r so the force can be applied on the other block also so if the question is given like this this is a rough surface this is one block of mass m1 and this is one block of mass m2 okay so then so the external force may apply on this body okay so and then so till how much force you apply so that both the blocks will move together and then what is the acceleration of both the blocks are so if the applied force if the applied force is more so will they move separately or together all these questions can be framed based on the block over block problems okay so just i am giving you the understanding just how the questions can be framed so now let's go by step by step so to proceed for these questions first let's understand how do we find the normal reaction so we already know how do we find the normal reaction right so let's suppose if this is the rough surface and then so there is a block of mass m is placed so then what is the normal reaction we have so there is a point of contact so wherever there is a point of contact there will be normal reaction right so normal surface exerts normal on the block and block exerts normal on the surface yes or no there are two normals the surface exerts normal on the block 
and block exits normal on the surface this part we know right and we neglect this n the one which is on the the one which is on the surface uh, surface we neglect that so then here the weight sorry here the weight that will be equals to mg so in this particular case so the normal reaction is equals to simply mg you know that so but normal reaction is not always equals to mg you also know that point right so for example in inclined plane case so here so here is a block of mass m is placed so let this angle be theta so that here is a normal so this is a normal reaction so what is the force balanced by that here it's going to be mg cos theta so in this particular case so the normal reaction is going to be mg cos theta so till now we discussed these basics we already know this till now so now the thing is how do we find the normal between the two blocks if they are placed one over uh, another this kind of questions so how do we find the normal so see here so the first thing let's take this one there are two points of contacts so here is a point of contact right and here is a point of contact here is also the point of contact is there yes or no so here is a point of contact and here is a point of contact that means there exist two normals what are the two normals tell me so the block m1 exerts normal n on the block m2 the block m1 exerts normal n on the m2 block and then so and see here this block m1 also m2 also will exert equal normal on the block m2 m1 sorry so this block m2 will also exert equal normal on the m1 right and so what is the other normal so on the m on the m1 so there is one more normal is there which is n dash let it be is this point clear guys see here just on the block here is the normal so here is a point of contact so that the normal reaction will be there upside and then the m1 block exerting normal on the m2 and m2 will also exert normal on the m1 so which is downward right so then here is a normal here is a point of contact so that the normal will be n dash and the block m1 exerts n dash on the surface which we ignore which we do not take right so now draw the free body diagram of m1 if you m2 sorry first let's draw for the m2 so for the m2 so only the normal reaction is acting upside there are no other forces on the m2 this n dash is on the m1 see here this n dash is on the m1 okay so here the weight acts so therefore m2g so the normal reaction is equals to m2g which normal it is the normal which is placed here understood so or else next what is n dash so draw the free body diagram of m1 block so on the m1 block i could see that n dash acting up this is the n dash which is acting up and then the normal reaction n acting down yes or no see here this normal you should consider m2 block is exerting normal n on the m1 block so right and then so down m1 g is also there m1 g is also there so we can say that here n dash is equals to m1 g plus n right so n dash is equals to m1 g plus what is n n is equals to m2 g we can write n is m2 g so n dash is equals to so m1 plus m2 into g so this is the actual procedure but the, in the simple way you can directly tell so what is the normal reaction so i'll tell you the simple procedure see here so this is a block this is a block of mass m1 and this is a block of mass m2 so there are two point of contacts obviously there will be two normals so let the normal reaction here it be n okay so identify the colors carefully and then let the normal reaction here it be n dash okay so no need to go for the procedure the simple shortcut is so the normal n is equals to what are all the masses that are on the point of contact so what are all the masses that are there on the point of contact where you are finding the normal so here is the normal n so what are all the masses which are upon this point of contact only m2 
so that mass into g you do so n is equals to m2 g yes or no this normal we got n is equals to m2 g so and then see here n dash is equals to i can write here n dash is equals to so here can we write uh, directly here how many masses are there two masses are there so m1 plus m2 masses are there into simply g yes or no over this point of contact so m1 and m2 are there that's why m1 plus m2 into g just multiply it with g so if there are three blocks let's suppose if there are three blocks let me take uh, consider this is a block one m1 block and consider this is a m2 block and consider this is a m3 block so there are three blocks so now what are the different points of contacts so here the normal will be there let it be n and here the normal will be there let it be 2 right and then here also the normal is there let it be 3 so there are three normals total so what are they here it is normal let it be n and then next let it be n dash here and then let it be n double dash so there are three normal so now write the formula for each normal simple way so n is equals to upon n how many masses are there only m3 so that's why m3 into g so n dash n dash is equals to how many masses are there over this point of contact two masses what are they m2 plus m3 into g and then so m1 see here over this pink one how many masses are there three masses are there so that's why n double dash is equals to so m1 plus m2 plus m3 into g hope you guys understood how do we find sorry guys so how do we find the normal reaction clear for block over block problems how do we find the normal reaction so is this clear concept Chalo. so let's move further now so how do we solve the block over block problems so the standard procedure steps i am going to discuss now so follow the standard procedures you might not understand so just while i am writing here but i am going to solve the same the some questions based on the same procedure at that time you will understand everything so for next five minutes just be patient and write the steps along with me okay after five minutes while solving the questions you will understand everything okay just i am writing what are the different steps that we should follow this is the standard procedure so the first step is the first step identify the target block identify the target block so what is the target block so on which only friction force acts so the block on which only friction force acts the block on which only friction force acts only friction force acts the block on which only friction force acts so that's a target block that's the first step so then the second step the step two that is find the f limiting between the two blocks find f limiting between the two blocks find the f limiting between the two blocks okay Chal. so what is f limiting formula so the f limiting is equals to so mu s into n so if mu is given only one consider it as mu s and mu k so if mu is given it's not mentioned whether it's mu s or mu k so you can consider it as mu s and you can consider it as mu k for both it's going to be same okay so that's a, step, a second step and the third step so find the a, a max find maximum acceleration of the target block find the maximum acceleration of the target block so what is the acceleration formula so that a max is equals to the maximum acceleration will occur so for the maximum friction so the f limiting by so that blocks mass so let it be m so just write the steps along with me you will understand 
this procedure once I solve the questions. Okay, so this is the third step. So then the fourth step. So then the fourth step. So find f max. So for both the blocks, find f max. So what is that f max? So f max is equals to. So if there are two blocks, block or block problems means 99% times you will get only the two blocks. So m1 plus m2 into that a max. Okay. So this is a fourth step. So now fifth step. If f applied the applied force is less than the if f applied is less than the f max so then both blocks will move then both blocks will move will move with both blocks will move together both blocks will move together so if f applied is less than f max if f applied is less than f max so then both blocks will move together so with what acceleration the both blocks will move so that is m1 let's suppose the first one and m2 the second one so then they both will move with the same acceleration so if this is a f applied so then that acceleration of both the blocks will be equals to so the f applied by f applied by so the m1 plus m2 the net mass m1 plus m2 so this is a fifth step so if the sixth step if f applied is greater than the f max if f applied is greater than the f max so in that particular case so both blocks will move separately both blocks will move separately will move separately okay Chal. so in this case how do we find the acceleration of both the blocks so to find to find acceleration of both the blocks both blocks consider individual blocks and apply nlm consider individual blocks and apply nlm and apply the newton's laws of motion where f is equals to ma on each block clear Chal. so these are the steps so i am sure you you are not understanding anything from here right so these steps now i'll uh, apply for the questions so that you can understand easily okay so don't scold me so what you are teaching sir what is there uh, you wrote the steps huh? so don't think like that just i'm going to follow the questions uh, solve the questions now you'll understand everything i can assure you okay so let's go further hello so let's note it down let's note down guys that so let's start with the basic questions so the maximum value of f which can be applied on the system shown in the figure so that both blocks move together with same acceleration see here so both blocks move together with same acceleration they are saying so first thing is so you can identify that this is a block over block question block over block question right so here the only force that is act this is a block of mass m1 this is block of mass m2 so the bottom surface is a smooth surface and here it is the coefficient of friction is given that means this is a rough surface this is a basic understanding related to this question and the force external force is applied on only block one okay so now what they are saying so what is a force what should be this force so that these both blocks will move together this whole system should move together that's what they are saying 
this if you apply the force on the m1 block so the m2 block also will move along with it it should not fall understanding so what should be this force that's a question so now so follow the basic procedure follow the basic procedure first thing is identify the target block so what is the target block here see understand the concept carefully here you applied the force consider this as a frame of reference m1 is the frame of reference consider m1 is the frame of reference frame of reference means let's suppose you go and sit there frame of reference means from where you are observing that's a frame of reference right so if m1 is a frame of reference you go and sit in m1 on the m1 block then you observe the m2 so as a force is applied on the m1 so you you can see that m2 m1 is moving right so you if you observe the m2 so it feels that it's going backward yes or no you are sitting inside the m1 block right so and there is some external force is applied obviously the m1 block will move if the m1 block is moving if you observe the m2 block in by sitting in the m1 block so then you can observe that the m2 block it seems that the m2 block is going backward so then where should the friction act opposes the relative motion right so the relative motion the motion is left side for the m2 block right so that's why the friction should act in this direction on the m2 block yes or no so that's a one thing and then so let's suppose this is a frame of reference m2 is a frame of reference so if you observe you are sitting inside the m2 block now you are observing the m1 on the m1 force f is applied so which is moving right side right which is moving right side so you are, with respect to you now you are in m2 block with respect to you the block m1 is moving to the right relative motion is to the right so friction where should friction act so the friction that should act on the m1 is f this side understood the concept see if you are sitting inside the m1 so as a force is applied on the m1 so it seems that you are moving rightward so with respect to you the m2 block seems to be moving backward obviously the friction opposes a relative motion right as it is move it seems to be moving backward that's why on that m2 block friction should act right side right so on the m1 block if you if it is the frame of reference m1 block is moving this side so relative motion is right side so where should friction act on the m1 so to the left you should bring it to the left you are in this then it seems to be moving backward right so what you should do chalo come with me you should pull it this way so which force friction force with the friction force okay so or else if you are sitting in this so it seems to be moving in this direction so chalo come backward so which force friction force that's it so that's a just the concept so first step is what's the first step identify the target block target block is the one on which only the friction force act see here on the m1 block external force is acting friction force is acting m1 is not our target block so on the m2 block the only force that is acting is friction force yes or no what is the first step the identify the target block what is the target block the block on which only friction force act so the m2 is a block on which only friction force is acting so here m2 block is a target block the first step done now so then find the f limiting between the two blocks so find f limiting between the two blocks the second step is f limiting is equals to f limiting is equals to mu into n here only one mu is given so it is between the two blocks so what is the normal between two blocks here the normal between two blocks it's going to be n is equals to this is a point of contact between the two blocks and what are all the blocks which are there on the point of contact only m2 so that's why n normal is equals to m2 g i can simply write so the second step is also done so now the third step so what's the third step a max of the target block what is the maximum acceleration of the target block so the a max is equals to what's the formula f limiting by mass of the target block what is the mass of the target block m2 is a mass of the target block and f limiting f limiting by m2 so what is f limiting formula mu m2 g right by so m2 so here m2 m2 cancel 
which is equals to mu g which is equals to mu g so therefore the maximum acceleration is going to be mu g right so then so mu g so next what what's the fourth step so the fourth step is find f max so the maximum force which is equals to m1 plus m2 both the blocks mass of both the blocks m1 plus m2 into a max into a max so what is m1 plus m2 so here both the blocks are directly m1 plus m2 only no values are given so what is acceleration maximum mu g so till this force till f max so both the blocks will move together so you can write here also where is that so till this force is applied till this force both the blocks both the blocks will move together will move together till this force both the blocks will move together so what's the, what they are saying in the question what is the force what is the maximum value of force applied that can be applied on the system so that f max that can be applied on the system so that both the blocks move together is m1 plus m2 into mu g so it's going to be m1 plus m2 into mu g option d is a correct one simple one now you guys understood the procedure if not i am going to solve more questions Let's try to understand okay so this is just a basic question where we just solve what is the f max for both the blocks to move together right chalo so next let's go for the another question so we need don't need another slide so let's delete this one so let's take this question guys try this on your own those who understood try this question on your own a block of mass m is placed another block of mass capital m see here two blocks lying on a smooth surface this is a smooth surface there is no friction right so the coefficient of static friction between the m and capital m is mu s so here is a point of contact and this surface is rough they are saying so what is the coefficient of friction there the coefficient of friction between these two blocks is mu s right so what is the maximum force what is the maximum force that can apply to m so that blocks remains at rest so what is the maximum force that can apply on the small m block so that blocks remains at rest blocks remains at rest means with respect to one another they are in rest which means so they should move together if they move together with respect to one another they will be in rest right i am moving so you are also moving along with me so with respect to each other we both are in rest yes or no if you are sitting in the bus and your friend is also sitting next to you so if you see each other you are in rest with respect to each other right but for the person who is observing outside you both are in motion this basic thing is clear right you know that right chalo so now so here simply they are asking what is the f max what is the maximum force for which both the blocks will move together the blocks remains at rest means they move together that's a basic understanding so now follow the easy steps what's the concept here understand with respect to one another uh, under by considering the frame of reference so the force is applied on the small f so consider this is the frame of reference so if it is a frame of reference you are moving forward right so with respect to you so the capital m is moving uh, backward yes or no it seems to be you are moving right side so with respect to you this one the capital m mass seems to be moving left side right so that the friction should oppose the relative motion the friction should act right side on this and then if you consider this as a frame of reference capital m so the force is applied on the small m it seems to be moving to the right it seems to be moving to the right with respect to capital m block so what it should do chalo come backward so that's why the friction should act left side on this so now the first thing is identify the target block so what is our target block on which only the friction force is acting so i can say that the capital m is a block on which only the friction force is acting capital m is a block on which only the friction force is acting so this point is clear so the first one then the second one find f limiting between the two blocks find f limiting between the two blocks here is the f limiting you have to find what is the f limiting 
so which is given as so in place of mu you can take mu s into n so what is the normal here so let the normal be n here so the normal is equals to so what is that m g right so the uh, over the point of contact only the mass existing is m g don't get confused between between the small m and capital m mass so the f limiting is always between the two blocks the f limiting is always between the two blocks so that's why here the f limiting is going to be mu s and the coefficient of friction between these two blocks into n the normal between the two blocks what is the normal here so simply what are all the uh, masses which are there on that point of contact so only small m mass is there into g multiply that with g right so therefore it's going to be mu s into m g so this point second step is also clear right so chalo so let's go for the third step that is finding the a max so what is the a max so f limiting by the target block mass what is the target block a max of the target block we have to find so f limiting by the target block mass is capital m see here target block mass is capital m so which is equals to here f limiting is mu s m g by capital m don't cancel mm -M. these two are different this is small m this is capital m right so we got a max as well so now we need the f max what is the f max formula so which is equals to so the total mass net mass which is capital m plus small m into the maximum acceleration so capital m plus small m so here no values are given let them be so what is a max we got a max is mu s m g by capital m so that's what they are asking find the maximum force so check the option so mu s m g so here there is no denominator eliminate that mu s m g capital m plus small m so by m so here mu s here capital m g is given this is not the correct so none of these no so the here is the correct option see here mu s small m g and then small m plus capital m by capital m okay na? so now clear the concept if not i am going to solve more questions again so we don't need another slide for this also so done these two questions just analyze on it your own guys once again so let me go for the other question the next one Chal. so what they are saying see here so acceleration of the 5 kg and 10 kg blocks in meter per second square if the f applied is 30 newtons so this is a block over block problem so first the bottom surface is a smooth surface and this is going to be the rough surface and here the force is applied on this that's a basic understanding right so here both are moving with the different accelerations same acceleration same acceleration different acceleration so the first thing is so whether both the blocks are moving with the moving together or moving separately so that you should calculate that you should uh, analyze first so here the concept is if you consider this as a frame of reference if you consider this as a frame of reference so then the force is acting on the 5 kg block if you sit in this and observe this it seems to be moving moving right side so that's why chalo, let's come backward what is our uh, force that acts opposite the relative motion is friction yes or no so if you consider this as a frame of reference if you consider this as a frame of reference so then it seems to, you are moving right side it seems to 10 kg block is moving backward so chalo, let's move forward so what with what force the friction force right so understanding both on both the blocks the friction force acts so with respect to this the friction acts on the top block in the opposite uh, to the left with respect to this block on this block the friction acts to the right it always opposes the relative motion done chalo. so let's suppose you are uh, your friend and you are standing here so and you started running you started running so then with respect to you your friend is in rest now yes or no so what we do what you do so just let chalo, let's move on your friend the friction that acts is f now understanding so that's how you should understand the same thing i'm saying here okay so that's the friction concept now so identify the target block the first thing is the target block i could see directly is that only the friction is acting on the 10 kg block yes or no on the 5 kg block there is external force as well so the target block is 
द टारगेट ब्लॉक इज टेन के जी डन सो द सेकेंड स्टेप फाइंड द एफ लिमिटिंग बिटवीन द टू ब्लॉक्स सो वॉट इज द एफ लिमिटिंग सो हियर बिटवीन द टू ब्लॉक्स द एफ लिमिटिंग बिटवीन द टू ब्लॉक्स सो द कोफिशंट ऑफ फ्रिक्शन इन टू द नॉर्मल रिएक्शन वॉट इज द कोफिशंट ऑफ फ्रिक्शन बिटवीन दो टू ब्लॉक्स जीरो पॉइंट फोर डोंट गेट कंफ्यूज द एफ लिमिटिंग इज बिटवीन दीज टू ब्लॉक्स let suppose if they give this surface is also the rough surface and the coefficient of friction is given here let suppose mu is equals to 0.5 for the bottom surface so don't consider that in this because this f limiting is between these two blocks that's why you should consider the coefficient of friction which is there between these two blocks only understanding the concept chal so mu is 0.4 here into so normal this is a point of contact here you are finding the f limiting right this is a point of contact so over the point of contact what are the uh, masses that are there only 5 kg is there so 5 into g that's it so the normal is 5 into g so which is nothing but 0.4 into 5 into 10 so 4 into 5 which is 20 newtons is a f limiting yes or no so this is 0.4 in uh, 4 into 5 yeah, 20 newtons f limiting so then find the a max of the target block find the a max of the target block so what which is equals to f limiting by f limiting by the target block mass is how much 10 kg so f limiting is 20 by 10 which is equals to 2 meter per second square so the maximum acceleration of these blocks is going to be 2 meter per second square okay so but don't say that the acceleration of both the blocks is 2 meter per second square that's the maximum acceleration okay understand this statement so then the next step what we have to find find the acceleration so see here find f max next the fourth step f max is equals to so net mass what is the net mass 10 plus 5 into a max s so 10 plus 5 15 into a max is 2 so which is 30 newtons is a maximum force so that means here uh, the maximum force that is acting the f max that can that is acting is 30 newtons and what is the f applied this is the f applied see here the f applied is going to be 30 newtons f applied is going to be 30 newtons so see the step here which step here so if f max is less than or equals to sorry guys here less than or equals to if f applied is less than or equals to f max if f applied is less than or equals to f block f max so then both the blocks will move together here see in this particular situation try to understand so the maximum force that is up to 30 newtons both the blocks will move together you should understand in such a way that so up to 30 newtons force both the blocks will move together now what is the applied force the applied force is exactly 30 newtons so that means so both the blocks will move together up to 30 newtons both the blocks will move together both the blocks will move together up to 30 newtons both the blocks will move together so this concept is clear everyone chill so now next so with what acceleration they move with what acceleration they move here you can cancel out this one this one why they are having different accelerations right so they either this or this b or c are the correct ones because they both move together with the same acceleration so what is that acceleration how do we find that acceleration so here 10 kg block and here it is 5 kg block so this whole thing is moving with the same acceleration what is the f applied the 30 newtons is acting right side so therefore that acceleration is equals to net force what is the net force 30 newtons by net mass so what is the net mass 15 10 plus 5 so which is equals to the 2 meter per second square so which is equals to 2 meter per second square that means both the blocks will move with an acceleration of 2 comma 2 both the blocks will move with an acceleration of 2 comma 2 so don't decide the acceleration of these two blocks by uh, checking the a max try to understand this acceleration will be maximum if your applied force is maximum if your applied force is equals to f max so then 
they both move with the a max so that is 2 meter per second square in this particular case the 30 newtons is the f max and 30 newtons is the applied force so both are equal right so up to 30 newtons they both move together so as 30 newtons only the applied force here so that's why both the blocks will move with the maximum acceleration of 2 meter per second square so don't directly say that always the acceleration of both the blocks is 2 meter per second square so let me clear your doubt so if the same question let me modify consider this is a block of 10 kg and this is the block 5 kg so on the 5 kg block the force is acting right previously so previously 30 newtons is acting now this time i am saying 15 newtons is acting okay now so let's consider the same concept here mu is equals to 0 0.4 again so the first step identify the target block the target block is 10 kg block this is clear and find what is f limiting the f limiting is equals to mu into n so mu is 0 0.4 so n n is between these two blocks so therefore n is equals to 5g 5g so 5 into g is 10 so which is going to be 20 newtons this is a f limiting so then find what is a max the a max is f limiting by the target block mass 10 so which is 20 by 10 so which is 2 meter per second square this is the maximum acceleration this maximum acceleration to be considered when the force is maximum but here what is the case the applied force here the f applied is 50 newtons which is less than the f uh, max f applied is less than f max so in this particular case here both blocks move both blocks move together this concept is clear both the blocks will move together right but not with the 2 meter per second square this is a maximum acceleration but this is not the acceleration of each block so now how do you find the acceleration of each block here see this is a 10 kg and this is a 5 kg so they both are moving with some acceleration a so what is the net force acting on that so the 15 newtons force so therefore the a net acceleration is equals to net force 15 by net mass 15 so which is equals to 1 meter per second square so here as the applied force is less than the f max so they both move together with what acceleration 1 meter per second square so then what is this a max sir that's a maximum acceleration when that should be considered when the f max is equals to f applied when f max is here in this particular case the f max is equals to f applied so both blocks will move together with maximum acceleration both blocks move together with maximum acceleration with maximum acceleration done understood this point everyone clear this concept Chalo. next let's move further let me take one more question so let's uh, try this question on your own guys so i hope i can go a bit faster here so consider the situation as shown in the diagram so the coefficient of friction between the blocks is between the blocks here between the blocks so the coefficient of friction is given as 0 0.5 right so the acceleration of the lower block we have to find the acceleration of the lower block strictly they are saying lower block whether they are moving together or uh, separately we don't know first we have to calculate that so obviously you know that if you consider this as a frame of reference you are going forward so it seems to be moving backward so that the friction on this will be right side and if you consider this as a frame of reference so the this one is moving right side so that the friction should act on it left side so first thing the target block identify the target block here on which only the friction acts so the 5 kg is a target block so then find the f limiting between the two blocks f limiting is equals to so the coefficient of friction into n right so where between the two blocks right so mu n is equals to so here above the point of contact only 2 kg is there so that's why 2g so mu is 0 0.5 n is 2 into g is 10 so this is going to be 5 into 2 10 newtons is the f limiting so then find a max the a max is equals to f limiting by 
the target block mass 5 so f limiting is 10 target block mass 5 so which is 2 meter per second square so this is the maximum acceleration guys so this is a maximum acceleration okay so then whether the blocks are moving together or not how do we find find the f max what is f max so the net mass what is the net mass 5 plus 2 into the a max right so this is a a max so 5 plus 2 7 into so uh, a max is 2 so which is 14 newtons so up to 14 newtons both the blocks will move together here up to 14 newtons both blocks move together both blocks move together yes or no so here what is the applied force here applied force is 7 newtons they gave so in this particular case so the f applied in this particular case so the f applied is less than the f max the f applied is less than the f max so both blocks moves together so both blocks moves together the both the blocks moves together with the same acceleration right so what is that acceleration don't say that that acceleration is 2 meter per second square that acceleration is a maximum acceleration when you should consider that maximum acceleration when your f max is equals to f applied when your applied force is 40 newtons you need not to go to uh, you need not to do any further step you can say both the blocks are moving with 2 meter per second square when your applied force is equals to the f max but your, your applied force is not the f max right so applied force is less than f max so they both move with how much force here 5 here 2 so they both move together with same acceleration upon applying the force of 7 newtons so that acceleration is equals to net force upon net mass right so what is the net force here the net force is 7 newtons so what is the net mass 7 so this is 1 meter per second square that means both the blocks will move at an acceleration of 1 meter per second square so they said lower block whether it's a lower block or upper block they both move together clear understood this concept guys everyone sure so let's move further so the question 4 done so let's go for the question number 5 so try to understand this question here acceleration of the 5 kg and 10 kg block in meter per second square if f applied is 15 newton same kind of question you can solve it easily see here this is a 15 newton applied force so first thing is if you consider this as a frame of reference so this is moving right side so that the friction should act left side so if you consider this as a frame of reference so this seems to be moving backward so that the friction acts on this right side yes right so first identify the target block the target block is the one on which only the friction force acts which is the 10 kg block and then so find the f limiting the next step is find the f limiting which is mu s into n so what is the coefficient of friction between the two blocks it's given 0 0.4 into normal so the normal between the two blocks you should take the normal between the two blocks so normal is equals to 5g here on the point of contact only 5 kg body is there so that's why 5g g is 10 so 4 into 5 20 newtons is a f limiting so then find what is a max the a max is equals to f limiting by the target block mass so right so what is the f limiting we got 20 by 10 this is 2 meter per second square this is a maximum acceleration now check both the blocks uh, what is the maximum force the f max is equals to so net mass which is 10 plus 5 into a max right so here which is equals to 10 plus 5 15 the a max is 2 so 15 into 2 30 newtons so now observe carefully here now observe carefully sorry so now observe carefully so this is a surface so here is a 10 kg block and here is a 5 kg block so on which one the force is applied on the 5 kg block so on the 5 kg block the applied force is this is a applied force this is a f applied which is 50 newtons and then what is the f max that we got the f max that we got is 30 newtons so in this particular case the f applied is greater than the f max yes or no so the f applied is greater than the f max 
so the obvious thing is both the blocks will not move together blocks do not move together blocks do not move together so can we eliminate any options see there can we eliminate any options so both the blocks do not move together so their accelerations are not going to be equal you can eliminate these two options directly now only options that are left are a and d so now how do we find the acceleration of each block now so the observe the sixth step so observe the sixth step so where is the sixth step here c so if f applied is greater than the f max so then both blocks will move separately so to find the acceleration of both both blocks consider the individual blocks and apply the nlm so we have to consider both the blocks as separate ones and apply the uh, apply the newton uh, nlm here so consider the 5 kg block first on the 5 kg block so here the friction plays the role see here whatever the concept that we discussed so that is the friction plays the role here so on this the friction is acting right side and on this the friction is acting left side yes or no on this the friction is acting right side on this 5 kg block the friction friction is acting left side yes or no clear Chal. so now see on the 5 kg block the f applied 50 newtons is acting this side and then the friction what is the friction that acts the f limiting that's acting is left side right so the body will accelerate to the right so apply the newton second law so i can say that the applied force 50 minus the f limiting is equals to mass of the block phi into the acceleration of the block a that's it so then 50 minus what is the f limiting the f limiting between the two blocks that we got it as 20 newtons so 50 minus 20 is equals to 5 into a so which is going to be 30 is equals to 5 into the acceleration a so the acceleration is equals to 5 to 30 by 5 6 meter per second square so that means the first uh, the 5 kg block will have the acceleration of 6 meter per uh, 6 meter per second square so in both the cases it's going to be 6 and 6 so again you should go for the next one so then take the 10 kg block so take the 10 kg block so on the 10 kg block the only force that is acting is friction right side the only force that is acting is friction right side right so therefore it accelerates to the right right so what is the acceleration let the acceleration here it is a dash so that acceleration a dash is equals to so the force f upon the mass 10 kg what is the force here what is the force uh, f limiting is f is nothing but this is a f limiting 30 by 10 so which is 3 meter per second square so this is the acceleration of 10 kg block which is 3 meter per second square yes or no clear on the 10 kg block the only force that is acting is f so f is equal what is f limiting 2 right f limiting 20 sorry my bad here i took 20 or 30 f limiting 20 only right yeah so f limiting is 20 see here f limiting is 20 right so that's why f limiting 20 by 10 so which is nothing but 2 meter per second square the acceleration of the 10 kg block is 2 meter per second square option d is the correct one understood clear guys chill so let's move further hope you are understanding the problems so let's solve the one more question so there are two blocks again so mass of the block a is this is 10 kg block and this is 15 kg block so and the force is applied on the 15 kg block see here both the surfaces are rough surfaces both the surfaces are rough surfaces right so now consider the frame of reference b if you consider the frame of reference so b is moving right side so with respect to b a is seems to be moving left side so that's why the friction acts on it to the left and then if you consider this as a frame of reference so this is moving right side so let's come backward by applying the frictional force f so this is clear right so now apply the target uh, sorry identify the target block the target block is going to be on which only the friction acts so that is 10 kg the 10 kg is the friction that acts uh, sorry uh, target block so then find the f limiting so don't get confused to find the f limiting f limiting is always between the two blocks guys 
f limiting is always between the two blocks so f limiting is equals to mu into n formula sir which mu we should consider now so which is there between the two blocks what is that 0.4 you should consider and normal which one sir again between those two blocks so the normal is equals to simply so upon this point of contact we have only 10 kg mass so that's why 10 g is the normal reaction so here 10 into g is going to be 10 again so 4 into 10 so 40 newtons is a f limiting the second step is here most of the students they get confused whether to take the mu as 0 0.2 or 0 0.4 and normal should we take it as uh, 25 g or 10 g now the f limiting is always between the two blocks guys so that's why you should consider the coefficient of friction between the two blocks and normal upon this point of contact normal which is upon this point of contact right Chal. so now the next step you know so the a, a max is equals to the f limiting upon the target block mass 10 so f limiting is 40 the target block mass 10 so this is 4 meter per second square is a maximum acceleration so then find the f max which is equals to the 15 plus 10 into so the a max so which is equals to so 15 plus 10 25 into the a max 4 so 100 newtons so up to 100 newtons both the blocks move together up to 100 newtons both blocks move together right so up to 100 newtons both blocks move together both blocks moves together right so what is the f applied in the given question the f applied in the given question is 90 newtons right so therefore in this particular case so the f applied is 90 newtons and f max we got 100 newtons and f applied we got we, they gave 90 newtons so directly can we say that the f max is greater than the f applied f max is greater than the f applied so that both blocks move together so both blocks moves together both the blocks moves together right so with what acceleration they move together see here so here is the logic now again so this is the rough surface and then here is the 10 kg block 10 or 15 what are the masses 15 10 right so this is 15 this is 10 yeah so this is a 15 kg block and this is a 10 kg block so they both are moving with the acceleration a so what is the applied force so the f applied is equals to 90 newtons so don't directly do 90 f applied is equals to like uh, f applied is equals to the force um, acceleration is equals to force upon mass 90 by 25 don't do that because the bottom surface is a rough surface again here this bottom surface is a rough surface right so that the friction acts in this direction here the whole for this whole thing the friction acts in this direction so what is this friction how do you find this friction so the friction is equals to mu into the normal what is the mu so the bottom blocks mu here what is the coefficient of friction at the bottom block 0.2 and what is the normal that we should take here at this point of contact we need the normal so which is equals to the normal here it is going to be let it be n dash so the normal here it is going to be n dash so that n dash is equals to how many masses are there two masses so 25 is a mass into g so nar n dash is equals to 25 g so 25 into 10 so that's why 0 0.2 so this is 2 into 25 15 newtons yes or no so that means if you draw the free body diagram of this if you draw the free body diagram of this situation see here so this is a whole mass what is this to to total mass 25 kg is the whole mass so on this 90 newtons is acting right side and then the friction force what is the friction force 50 newtons is acting left side and the acceleration will be obviously equal to the right side yes or no so then find the apply the newton second law now so more force minus less force 90 minus 50 is equals to mass 25 into the acceleration a obviously so this is going to be 40 which is equals to 25 into a so from here the acceleration a is equals to 40 by 20 
phi so which is nothing but uh, phi phi is are phi eight times so eight by phi which is nothing but eight ones are eight six are so one point six meter per second square so that means both the blocks move together with the same acceleration so the first thing is with the same acceleration you can cancel out see you can put the option directly here how so this is two and one point six this is one point six and two this is two and three you can rule out these three options the direct option is option is c you can choose the answer here itself by checking the options so however finally also we are getting the same 1.6 meter per second square understood concept is clear guys everyone done Chalo. so let's move further this is a question number six so now so let's go for the next concept that is the contact force c if an object is placed on the rough surface consider this is a rough surface so let's suppose so the object is moving towards right with some velocity v it is in motion with some velocity v v so now what are all the forces acting on the body tell me the basic thing what are all the forces that are acting on the body so here the normal reaction acts yes or no so this is the normal reaction and then as the object is moving right side so the force that acts to the left is going to be the frictional force so this side the frictional force will act so here this is a normal and this is a frictional force so now the contact forces there are two contact forces one is a normal reaction all right and then the other one is a friction force so now the net contact force we call so the net contact force the net contact force will be equals to so shall we say so between these two so the, here is a net contact force that comes so this is a net contact force right this is going to be the net contact force so this is a net contact force so which is going to be the f net net contact force is equals to so square root of n square plus f square okay so if you need you can write in this particular situation so the n is equals to mg yes or no so square root of so n is equals to in place of uh, n i am writing mg whole square so that maximum friction that acts is going to be the frictional force which is nothing but the f limiting the f limiting is equals to f which is equals to mu s into n or simply mu mu into n or mu s into n so in place of friction so i can write mu s n whole square mu s n whole square right so from here so or else let n be same here so let n square be n square itself we'll take it out so then here n square is common in both the ones n square is common so 1 plus here mu s square yes or no so here mu s square n square and n square i'm taking out so 1 plus mu s square so if you take n out so n into so square root of 1 plus so mu s are simply mu square so in place of n if you need mg so into 1 plus mu square this is a maximum contact force or the net contact force this is a maximum or net contact force clear understood guys chal so then what is the angle of friction so the angle of friction or angle of repose formula it's going to be same let's suppose this object is in motion right so let's suppose with v velocity it is moving obviously the friction force acts to the left side the simple concept just uh, understand here so here the friction force act the friction force that acts is maximum friction force that is f limiting right so and then this is a normal reaction so and then the net f net is equals to square root of f square plus n square right so from here shall i uh, take this angle as lambda so this is called the angle of friction 
so this is called the angle of friction so what is that angle of friction formula we can write so in this particular triangle shall i take the tan lambda is equals to so parallel shift this vector to the upside f limiting by n yes or no just parallel shift this one this side so tan lambda is nothing but opposite by adjacent opposite is f limiting here adjacent is n so what is f limiting the f limiting is so we know that mu s into n by n so here n n cancel so which is equals to mu s so therefore the tan lambda which is equals to mu s is a angle of friction so this is called the angle of friction lambda is a angle of friction done clear guys this concept chal so next so a body of mass m is kept on a rough horizontal surface coefficient of friction mu a horizontal force f is applied on the body but it does not move so but it does not move so the result of the normal reaction and the frictional force acting on the object is given by force f where f is given as see here so the question they said is here this is a rough surface a block of mass m is placed so we know that obviously the normal reaction acts this side and then the maximum friction that acts on the body is the f limiting the maximum friction right so then uh, the resultant of normal reaction and the frictional force so see here the re resultant of normal reaction and frictional force is this side so this is a f net so what is this f net we got that f net is equals to square root of f square plus f limiting whole square sorry so which is equals to n square plus f limiting whole square yes or no so here in place of f limiting shall we write mu s into n here mu s square into n square simply so here the f net is equals to the f net is equals to so n you take it out so that it comes out to be 1 plus mu s so in place of n which is equals to mg into 1 plus mu s so in place of mu s just simply write mu so this is a net force which is given by f they said it in the question so now where f is so if the block is not moving see here if the block is not moving so this is a net contact force this is a net contact force so if the block is not moving means the applied force will be the applied force should be should be either less less than or equals to this one mg into 1 plus mu that's it so square root of so this is square right square yeah this here it is square so done so here it is square here it is square and here also it is square right so the block is does the block does not move they said so does not move means it should be less than or equals to yes or no so option d is a correct one guys clear the concept Chalo. so that's it from my end so this is the end of your newton's laws of motion and friction on inclined plane is also there so what we do is we will take some extra session on Sunday. I will take some extra session on Sunday and I will solve the questions related to the Newton laws of motion complete from star starting to ending. I will take the questions and in that only I will take some questions related to the friction on an inclined plane. Okay, we have seen the friction on the rough surface right till now and block over block problems and on the inclined plane if the friction acts. So how the blocks will move and how do we find the acceleration? So all these things will understand through the questions. So but for tomorrow, I am going to start the new chapter that is circular motion. On Sunday's class, Sunday I put, will put in some extra lecture. So in that I will solve the questions related to the motion on an inclined plane, the friction on an inclined plane. Clear? So hello guys. So hope you guys are understanding the classes. So if you understand, just acknowledge the chart. So if you have any doubts also, you can acknowledge in the chart. I will take those questions or I'll come live some Saturday or Sunday if you have any doubts. So then I'll solve your doubts, guys. Okay. So chalo. So we'll meet in the next session with the new chapter that is circular motion. So in tomorrow's session. So till then.
keep studying all the very best bye take care